So this next wee bit is a really um, a um, intro to the showcase at schools and centres that are going to share a wee bit about what they're going to share in their breakout spaces. So um, we've got breakout spaces right across the two rooms and each of these people are going to come up and they've been given one minute to dazzle you with um, their, their presentations. We had a run through last Thursday and there was some work that needed to be done. <laughs> but they were pretty, pretty amazing. So we are just going to work through this list. You may have noticed a slight error in the program. Hold on, Mike. Uh, we are, the correct one is upon the screen. So I'm just going to invite Chloe up first to come and take the stand. Um, the stage is yours. Oh, good afternoon. Um, I'm from Rangiora High School. Um, so we are, we're asked to go for why and then what and then where. So our why, we were, we were discussing a lot about what actually mattered for, what's the most important thing for our Aponga and that came down to that they were prepared for an ever-changing future. Um, what that looks like, what we decided to change, thanks Lex. Um, we wanted to build better humans, not just better students. We wanted to look more holistically at what our students were and who they were. So we developed our, um, our dispositional matrix, our ahuatanga. Um, we changed form, front, form time, which was 80 minutes a week, to um, a course we call Wananga, which runs for 240 minutes per week. The classes are smaller, they're down to 20 students. That allows our, our kaiako to really get to know those, those students and to make sure that those students are being looked after in our kura. Um, we have a collaborative approach, approach to planning. Um, for example, we've got 18 year 9 kaiako that work together to create this program. Um, the tasks and activities revolve around the competencies, and so we value things like resilience and leadership and uh, teamwork, and instead of just worrying about whether or not they understand Pythagoras. <laughs> what we've been doing, um, we've been working on that collaborative approach, but it is definitely on a continuum. Um, we are trying to include students in that conversation, and it's proving really effective. Um, we've been growing staff efficiency and trying to get um, our reporting across again in conjunction with what students say and looking at how they want that to happen. Um, we've been talking a lot as well about whether things need to be working in an organic or fluid way and how does that balance with accountability. From here we're looking at what our tracking and reporting looks like long term and how do students actually get a grasp of this. The main goal is to get them to be able to articulate their own success in their terms not just ours. Um, Timetabling getting better stuff buy-in because it shows that that allows for better student buy-in um, and we're also just looking to develop the program further and building our kite of resources. Kia ora team. Um, Tony Forster toku matua, mo ahi ia. Ko Karen Smith toku fire, mo toku marero ia. Ko Prajwal Thapa toku huara ngatira, mo Nepal ia. Uh, ko Shanta Forster toku mua, mo oto tahi a hau. Um, he kai fa kahere a ki mahi ki te whare i ko hunga hunga ki wiri siri kai te inoa. Um, mo reira, tēnā koutou. Um, I am from Wiri Siri Kai, as I mentioned, um, and I'm here to talk about um, what we've called te pikinga. So te pikinga is the ascent, and it's the name we chose to describe our journey in extending our culturally responsive practice. Um, to create positive outcomes for somebody can find on Kaiko as we can travel in this walker together. Um, <laughs> what was our why? <laughs> we're talking about whys. <laughs> um, we've reflected on our current practice and recognised that there were areas we could strengthen further. So in our learning we discovered the Hikaido schema and we actually utilised the potama at the back as a basis for our further learning. 
um, what happened next. Um, we reached out for support and guidance, engaging with Mataraka Mahanui uh, and exploring both internal and external professional learning to build our collective knowledge. Um, I need to speak on this um, quickly, very quickly. Um, this mural was um, created by our kaiko and it was um, created because um, well, it was inspired by our cultural narrative that we worked on with um, Dai and Mataraka Mahanui. Um, and so it's got all of all of those aspects of our high space learning in it, and it's proudly on display in our office. Um, outcomes for learning. The positive outcomes for Tamariki Whanau and Kaiku have been significant following this mahi. Um, the overarching impacts have been on the Nakitanga, Kotahitanga, and Whanaungatanga as all parties have worked and collaborated in this journey together. Through this, we've noted an eagerness to learn, understand, and share this knowledge, and we're carrying on in our journey. If you want to hear more about it, come and see me after. Um, at Papara Street this year, we are learning how to tell stories. And um, in particular, this story, Tūrama Waiwai, what is our story and how will they know? We have been very fortunate, um, like many schools in Christchurch, to be gifted a fabulous cultural narrative and naming story from Mataraka Mahanui. Um, and we are also in a rebuild three weeks into a <laughs> um, So, there are a number of processes around the story of our school, both historically and in, in the present and looking forward, that could simply be left to the adults to add to the design of our rebuild. Um, we wondered what our story would be if only those people who were employed here uh, were the ones that decided how our story would be represented. So our wondering is what is our story and how will they know? Um, and so this means our children have been given our cultural narrative and naming story and part of our education brief. And they're being supported in their learning to unpack the story of our school to Rangawai. To decide how it will be represented in the design of our spaces and problem solve how we share this with our present and future communities. How's it going? Just started really, but please come and hear um, what we've done so far. Uh, it looks like it will be our learning for 2022 and possibly 2023. <laughs> Let's see what happens. But these are some of the things that we have started already and are very exciting in our place and are um, really making it come to life. So please come and hear more. Thank you. So if you're interested, I'm here to talk about Aupaki Kawiyako in particular uh, the journey we've, we've been on over the last few while, uh, particularly from a reasonably narrow focused uh, achievement challenge around boys' writing, uh, and certainly now far more focused into cultural responsive practices and pedagogies, uh, sustaining practices into the future. It's a long piece of work, but we're in for the long haul, uh, and I'd love to share some details about where we're at, and also particularly our connection with uh, Mataraka Mahanui and the value we've really um, seen by undertaking that journey. And we've, we're really still at that middle stage working through, uh, and we'd love to talk to you a little bit about the indicators of success as well. Kia ora. Kia ora. <laughs> okay, I'm from uh, Tupuna Wai Waipapa, or Hagley College, and I brought an application too. 
Um, at Hagley, we have been piloting connected learning at year nine and 10 with three classes over three years, connecting English, science, and social studies. We've created a community of practice among the teachers of each class um, to support the design and implementation um, of the learning programs, and we meet uh, each week face to face. Our why is that at Hagley we are wanting to create opportunities for meaningful and authentic connections across disciplines to create opportunities, not for the sake of being future focused, but to support meaningful and purposeful student learning in a fast changing world. We have used a concept based curriculum over the past three years, focused on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We've used student inquiries, showcase projects, we evaluate learning over time, and reflections are a key part of the pedagogy that underpins the learning taking place. We strive to balance the learning, making sure that the connections do not override the subject-specific knowledge, but complement it. Next steps in 2022, that's a bit big, uh, we'll be asking all teachers of Year 9 to connect at least once with another subject area over the course of the year. Our overarching concept for Year 9 is identity, and teachers will be able to create or co-design concept questions with their classes to shape their learning. We intend on uh, building more communities and practice within our school uh, to support this change. So if you're interested in that, or you want to have a yarn, <laughs> <laughs> Duncan Toku Ingwa, uh, Peter Duncan Toku Papa, uh, Joan Duncan Toku uh, Mama, uh, Tina Duncan Toku Hoa Wahine, uh, George Ratu, Sarah, for Emily, for Rachel, for <laughs> James, uh, Amoa Tamariki, uh, Noreira Tina Kata Tina Kata Tina Kata Tina Kata. Ko te kawa ora, ko te kawa ora. Ko Aureki, tōku manga, ko Rangitata, tōku awa, no Timaru Aho. Ko Mountain View, tōku kura. Ko Kenneth, tōku papa. Ko Ruth, tōku mama. Ko Barker, Rawa, Huntley, oku tama. Ko Catherine Smith, tōku ingoa. No reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, we're here today to share with you our journey moving performing arts into the centre of our students' learning. Uh, so as part of that, we moved musical production into our classroom. Uh, we did that for two reasons. One, we saw the benefits, the lifelong benefits of students having artistic voice and vision in their learning. And two, we saw there was growing pressure in uh, the extracurricular space uh, for students to access that learning. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you know, we looked at our students' learning, and one of the things that certainly stimulated us as teachers was the idea that actually, what is learning for our students, and how does that progress? And one of the things that we have experienced, and even in our mihi, we were expressing to you is our family is so important, and we wanted to bring that to our classroom. And so, very much in the underlying principle was that idea of family and family in our classroom. And so as we established, what we established was a production class, a musical production class that was across our school year levels, so from 9 to 13. So at Mountain View High School, if you come and do musical production, you're in a class that has 9s in it and year 13s and about 70 students and us hiding in the nice. corner. <laughs> <laughs> and so in that environment, we were trying to make learning be contextual and purposeful. And so that's what we've established at Mountain View, and that's the journey that we've been going on. And as we move forward, we're looking at expanding that journey into other creative spaces um, in the same sort of mode. And in our little showcase, we'd love to go to share a little bit about how we found that and the principles that we found, and just those things that have happened along the way that have been so exciting for our students, and some of their stories of growth and establishing their identity in our room. So, um, so we've, we've been really proud of that, but we've certainly seen it in our students. So we'd love to share that. Thanks. 
te nā koutou katoa um, ko Tarawira te maunga, ko Okareka te roto um, i tipu ake au ki Rotorua Engari um, kei te noho au ki o Tautahi um, ko Perry Scott tōku ingoa no reira um, tēnā koutou uh, I have given myself in order to pique your interest today two seconds to cross my fingers and point meaningfully at Lex to push the play button. And this is spinning wheel of death. Oh no, the sound. Lex, what are we doing? In a world where technology is shifting rapidly and young people are engaging with content in new ways, building a sense of community and staying informed should be easy. But how? This community needs a hero. Mm. Heroes. <laughs> Since 2018, the student class has been striving to bring in schools' communications to the 21st century. But this story is still just getting started. <laughs> I'm Jocelyn Wright from um, Te Pito Te Punawai o Waipapa, which is Hagley Community Preschool. And I'm here with my colleague B tonight, and we're going to share what we've been doing recently. Um, we're going to share the mahi of the kayako at Te Pito Te Punawai o Waipapa. Our inquiry project be began as a, a teacher lead innovation fund project and it began back in 2019. It was a time of um, some change for us. There were a few things going on. We had some new team members in our kayaka team. We were all really trying hard to build relationships within our culturally and linguistically diverse community. We have about, uh, at that time, 65% of our whānau spoke languages other than English. And there were about 11 different languages in the preschool. Um, and we also had many whānau of Muslim faith who were or affected by the mosque attack. Our journey saw us shift our practices and the language we use to describe them. For example, rather than use the term culturally well, culturally, intent, uh, culturally responsive, we prefer to use the terminology of culturally intentional. Kayako have to do the hard work, and they work hard to be intentionally thinking ahead, being prepared in order to communicate and create opportunities and connections with diverse, cult uh, communities, diverse cultures in the community. Sorry. Over time, we've been able to identify the ways in which Tamariki learning has benefited from the culture, our culture, of Whakapano and Atanga in the preschool, and the ways in which we've really built lots of collaborative ventures, um, and had the ways that have evolved over time with the wider community to support Tamariki learning. So we're looking forward to sharing some of the stories with you. Um, please come and have a chat. Sure. Uh, 
Kira Kato. Uh, e Rata Ana Aho Kite Maunga uh, Okata. E Rata Ana Aho Kite uh, Awa Waiwa. Uh, ko Te Turitu Waitangi uh, Te Waka. Uh, no uh, Whakatū Aho. Ko Tumuaku Tuarua o Bromley School. Uh, for Joe Nichols Toko Inua. Uh, so, Bromley School is a DSL3 school on the east of Christchurch. Many years ago, we recognised that our tamariki needed a different way of showing our ideas and sharing their voices, and that we needed to place more value on them as learners with more engagement and agency. We wanted our students to be confident, to express themselves, know that they, are, know that they belong, and are connected to each other. In 2010, we travelled to Italy to explore the Reggio Media Early Childhood Philosophy. We became an Apple Distinguished School in 2017. We developed our age guiding principles based on these two foundational pedagogies and used the iPad as a tool for creativity and expression alongside our environments. Uh, as a staff and school, we are excited to share our, our ideas with others and continue to learn and be inspired. We believe our students can be successful on any global stage, that creativity is a value that will send our students out into the world and allow their voices to be heard. In today's workshop, we will explore how the 100 languages impacts on how we learn at Bromley School. <laughs> 